You're listening to Paris Search Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Paris Search UK Radio. Paris Search Radio, broadcasting to the UK and beyond. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to Kerry Greenaway and Mark Manley on the Dark Mirror Paranormal Show, only on Parasearch Radio. Good evening and welcome to the Dark Mirror Paranormal Show. My name is Kerry Greenaway and as always I'm joined in the studio by my lovely Mark Manley. Good evening Mark. Good evening on this very strange and auspicious show. (laughs) (laughs) And good evening Kaz. Kaz Rooney's in the house. Good evening. (laughs) Now I have bullied them into doing a show all about Scooby-Doo. Oh, dear God. (laughs) (laughs) Why? Why have I asked to do a show on Scooby-Doo, guys? Why why do you think I've asked this? Because Scooby-Doo and his pals investigate the paranormal. Correct. And uh, to be fair, we all watched it as kids. And I also suspiciously think that you two both have a hankering for Scooby snacks every now and again. If you have a strange smoking cigarette time. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't do that but you yeah. know <laughs> has been known I suppose in the past you know <laughs> <laughs> but it's something we all grew up on and it was our first sort of like taste as, as youngsters children of the paranormal and the supernatural and the weird and wonderful world of Scooby-Doo now we are talking about the original Scooby-Doo not the rehashed remake films or the rehashed remake cartoons they're absolutely oh my god what are they thinking uh, the, the original ones were the best they were yeah. weren't they yeah Scoop, scrappy dude was annoying as buggery exactly <laughs> it was very very annoying i will admit that now um let's talk a little bit about the history of scooby-doo In 1968, Fred Silverman, who was an executive in charge of children's programming for the CBS network, was actually looking for a show to revitalise his Saturday morning lineup. And, you know, everybody was sort of like looking at different things. And then he approached some producers, William Hanna and Joseph Barbera, uh, about creating a show against, uh, based around, sorry, a teenage rock group, believe it or not. And in between the gigs. That's right. In between all these geeks, these kids would solve mysteries. And he sort of wanted it as a crossover between um, a couple of shows that were popular at the time. One was a radio serial in the 1940s called I Love a Mystery. And in the early 60s, a TV show called The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis. Here's another one for you. Did you know that Scooby-Doo was supposed to have been in the rock band playing the bongo so that just shows you how stoned the whole lot of them were (laughs) (laughs) oh my goodness really yeah seriously he he, he was when it was first um the idea was first floated about scooby-doo was supposed to be in the bongo player we're uh, wearing a, a beret and sunglasses you know like wow you know that sort of thing yeah oh my goodness oh my me how funny Anyway, yes. things things changed a little bit, obviously, and it became it morphed into um, the Scooby Doo team that we know and love. So, who is in the team, Kaz? Tell us who is actually in the team. Uh, there is Fred and Daphne mm-hmm. and Thelma and Scooby and Shaggy. There is. That was the original five yeah. in the team, and obviously, you can't forget the Mystery Machine. Oh no, you can't forget that. Can't forget the iconic mystery machine. <laughs> you know, 
Now, <laughs> Scooby Doo's real name. What's his full name? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Scoobert Doo. Scoobert Doo. <laughs> Scooby Doo Doo Doo. Scooby Doo Bop Bop. You know. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh no. my goodness. Now, out of those, who would you say you were? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, I'm a cross between Shaggy and Scooby, I reckon. Yeah, I'd, I'd go with that, the comedy factor out of it all. Bit. Without the stone bit. Or the scared bit. No, yeah, I don't get scared. <laughs> exactly. Kaz, who would you say you were? Uh, Thelma. Yeah, see, I think I'm a cross no, between... No, I'd like no, to think... Daphne carries Thelma. I would like to think I'm a cross between Daphne and Velma. Oh, you got the glasses. So? Yeah, you're Thelma. <laughs> I want to be a bit sexier than Thelma. Oh, trust me, with the videos I've seen of Scooby-Doo, yeah, Thelma's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> so, the very first show of Scooby-Doo was, can anyone tell me? Not a clue. I don't know about the name of the first show, but I can tell you where the name Scooby-Doo came from. Okay, you tell me that, and then I'll tell you what the first episode was called. Scooby's name was originally meant to be Too Much. I kid you not, Too Much. Like, like that's too much, man. His name was meant to be Too Much. Really? Uh, however, yeah, while on the way to a development meeting, one of the singers um, was inspired by a line from uh, Frank Sinatra's Strangers in the Night, which was playing on the radio, and he sings... Dooby dooby doo, and that's ah. where Scooby Dooby Doo came from. Oh, how oh. funny! Now yeah. it actually debuted on a Saturday on September the thirteenth in nineteen sixty nine, and the very first episode was called "What a Night." I uh, no, same age as me, Scooby Doo. Can you believe that? Oh. I wasn't born then. I know you. Wasn't. Neither was I. <laughs> it was I. Yeah. I'm oh, really? clearly the eldest out of the group. <laughs> yes, <laughs> same year as me. Anyway, what a night for a night was called. It was called. Okay, mm. you, you've been you've been watching the programs, haven't you? I love a bit of Scooby Doo. I can't deny it. Yeah, we got locked up for that last time, so let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So anyway, it very first, and it was a hit, obviously, and many they fought many, many, many. Like monsters and mysteries, but what did it teach us as children? What did it teach us? Not everything is what it seems. Yeah. Don't really investigate something. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And get the mad Scottish woman to tell us something as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that all different people can all work together because they're yeah. all really different. Yeah. They're all completely different. And now we- it talks us that Fred's an idiot. <laughs> he was just like the, uh, oh, kind of like the beefcake of the group, wasn't he? Yeah, and he always kept disappearing off with Daphne. Mm, Funny that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not fine. Now listen, guys. Kaz did a poll on her Facebook page about this. Tell us about the poll you did, honey. <laughs> it was meant to be funny because. I was making light of this show. So I asked them different questions and it was basically what Scooby-Doo had taught us as kids or what they could think of as kids, I remember. Uh, So what they've said is, 12 people said that Scooby-Doo made the paranormal seem normal. Yeah. 11 people said Scooby-Doo taught us that different people can all work together. Mm -hmm. That's fair enough. Uh, five said it showed kids how to investigate things. Three people said um, it taught us that anything is possible, including talking dogs. <laughs> Two Scooby snacks explain that one. <laughs> Three people, including Penny, said it taught us about mad stoners and munchies. <laughs> um, another three said it showed kids how to look into things. And one person, actually Wendy Johnson, uh, added one that said that it showed people that showed us that people are actually scarier than spirits. I agree with that one totally. 
Yeah. People are scarier than spirits. I've always said that. It's not the ghosts yeah. that worry me, it's the humans. Yeah. That that bother me the most. The dead won't harm you in the living will. Exactly. That's, yeah. Exactly. I'm sure I said something about that poll as well, and I can't remember what on earth it was I said. I can't remember. I know I said I'm... it last night, and you went, oh, bugger, I should have put that on there. Oh, yeah, you did, and I said, I can't change it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said that everything always turns out all right. I'm sure that's what you said. Did I? Oh, yeah. there's a logical explanation for everything. Yeah. You just don't all oh. automatically know what it is to start with. So what's... I know I did. You know Papa Smurf? Yes. Yes. Right, well, the guy who does Papa Smurf's voice did Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo. Really? Yeah. I'm going to keep coming out with silly little facts now and again. No, that's absolutely fine. They're fascinating, yeah. the silly little facts. <laughs> we love them. <laughs> now, the other thing I think Scooby-Doo taught us was a little bit of mythology. Yes, it did. It brought yeah. history to life for, for a lot of kids. I know I used to be fascinated by it. I mean, you think of all the monsters that they yeah. sort of like encountered. So should we have a look at some of the monsters that they encountered? Oh, do tell. Do tell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they fought so many, or fought, I say they, they just uncovered so many different monsters from mutated frogs there was like Genie Poo is one of the episodes. I love that, <laughs> Genie Poo. Jack-o'-lantern was another one. I um, mean, it goes on and on. The list goes literally on and on and on. But there's things like the Godzilla. Godzilla, wow. gosh. Like the mummy and the wolf. Yeah. Mr. Hyde, as in Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. Where the man used to allegedly turn into like a Jekyll and Hyde. I remember that episode. We, we need to have Jay Lynch on this show because, quite frankly, he's as bat poo crazy as most of us here. And um, I reckon he, we should all make our own uh, Mystery Me Machine, uh, Mystery Incorporated team up with him in it. <laughs> you could be, you two could be Daphne and um, Velma. I'll be, I don't flip it well, no, the non-stone Shaggy and Scooby combined. And he can be, actually, no, he could be Shaggy. I'll be, I'll be Fred and Scooby. I love it. There was Dracula, <laughs> anyway, going back to the story. Um, there was Dracula. There was loads of Draculas, actually. I want to bite your neck. Ah, ah, ah. Honestly, <laughs> let me just tell you some of the, the, the ones in Dracula. Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School. Ghoul, Gowl School? How do you say that word? Ghoul. Dracula. Ghoul. Um, Sco- Dracula, Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf. Dracula, who's minding the monster. Dracula Jr. Dracula's wife, a Halloween hassle at Dracula's castle. Dracula's wife, <laughs> who's minding the monster. I mean, it goes on and on. Honestly, they fought so many, but they did teach us a little bit of mythology in regard to this. They taught us about mummies. If you remember, there's, there was always a mummy. In fact, in the that. Halifax advert that's going off at the moment on the TV, where they yeah. shoot Scooby and Shaggy go into the Halifax, don't they? Chased by a mummy. That that's on and TV they unwrap the, the mummy and it's a businessman. And the, yeah, the mummy comes chasing in after them. So it's mm-hmm. being reinvented and reintroduced all the time, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. If I remember rightly, that mummy one, that flipping mummy would chase after them going, coin, coin. <laughs> <laughs> so it actually gave us like a very, you know, naive glimpse at monsters that we, we talk about and do shows on in a more serious fashion now. Well, it yeah, also gave us a glimpse it. into investigating as well. I mean, I could see uh, uh, Kaz there investigating in a tiny short skirt and a um, magnifying glass. I mean, yeah, that'd go down well, wouldn't it? <laughs> Only in the summer. <laughs> not well, the weather it is at the moment. It was. If nothing um, else, it'll give you a place to park your bike. I was out on Saturday and it was absolutely freezing. You want to be up here in Yorkshire? You want to know how cold it is? I keyed my car when I turned round too quickly with my nipples. <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely freezing. But anyway, it did. It taught us how to basically break it down and actually look at the clues. I suppose you would like to say and break it down and actually be quite sceptical about it because they never actually had a real life monster there was only one episode where it went a bit weird and they actually had a female rock band and one of the female rock bands was actually a wicca and someone read from a book and it brought a a ghosty ghoulie real life spirit 
to life and then the wicker lady had to read from another book to get rid of the spirit that was yeah only one episode where this where the ghost was actually a real live and kicking ghost they actually had another one which had a um some spirits from the american civil war in it did they i didn't find out yeah i remember yeah, I remember watching that one. I think it was one of the newer ones, but I remember seeing that because my eldest daughter, Becky, was mental on Scooby-Doo, and I used to have to sit down with her and watch it, and I, I remember that one. But I think it was one of the newer ones. Hey, uh, here's a fact about Scooby-Doo. Did you know he's one of triplets? What, Scooby? Yeah. He's, yeah. Got two, he's got two identical brothers and sisters. One is called Skippy-Doo, and the other is called Dooby-Doo. No. There it is. He's one of triplets. Uh, his identical siblings are named Skippy Doo and Dooby Doo. Oh my god! Well, I really wish I'd never even thought about Scrappy Doo because that was just a travesty. Quite. Well, the original, the, ori- ugh, the original title of the um, it wasn't going to be called Scooby Doo. It was originally called Who Scared, but the um, writers thought it was too scary for kids, and that's why they renamed it and added a talking dog. Oh, oh right. Oh. Well, there you Do go. Do you know what happened? Strange, though. <laughs> What's that, darling? Scrappy Doo was just an annoying little. That we always yeah. did what Scooby Doo was saying. <laughs> yeah, we all did right? that, didn't we? We, we all, all did. <laughs> we all knew what he was <laughs> saying. He's easy to understand. If you can't speak Scooby, there's something wrong. I agree with that. <laughs> So they all. We will, we will. This is an ideal scenario, though. Where, like, basically, none of them seem to work. Yeah. yeah just like none a team, of them jobs. <laughs> I tell you, they're clearly trust fund kids. Oh God, two of them. Yes, definitely. They all piled around um, in the mystery machine. I've got but one it for is you. the original bunch of geeks, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Who who did Shaggy's voice? Oh God. Who did Shaggy's voice? Yeah. Oh. Um... As soon as I tell you, you're going to be like, oh, yeah. I know, I know it as well. It's... Well, I'll give you a clue. We used to listen to him when we were teenagers every Sunday. Oh, that don't help. Because my teenage years were completely different from your, yours. Only three years older than me, love. Yeah, I'm a bit older than that. <laughs> hey, no, you're born 69. I'm like, I'm just 21. Let's just put it out there that I'm 21 again for about the fourth time. Do you remember America's Top 40 and they split at the weekend? No. Oh, it was all... Yeah, you got it. I can see his face as well. I'll make you a cup of tea when I see you next if you get it. Come on, just tell us. Black hair. Black hair, amazingly white teeth. Yes. And I can't remember his name. Casey Kasem. That's it. Yeah, Casey Kasem. Casey Kasem, when he was asked to do the voice, wanted um, Scooby to be a vegetarian, but everybody turned around and said, don't be so silly. It's a dog. Exactly. Can you, <laughs> I mean, can you imagine a, a stoner dog, dog that's a vegetarian? <laughs> yeah, and a stoner dog. <laughs> yeah, but stoner, you know, they're not all vegetarians, you know. That's what I mean. So anyway, they're all piling around in this car solving mysteries and everywhere they went, they, they found one. Um, so they are the original paranormal investigation group because uh, that's pretty much what uh, we all do. We hear a ghost of- story or a myth and off we go and research it and investigate it. So what was... Oh, we would all love a mystery machine. I'd just like to put that out. We would all love a team, a team vehicle that looked like this. What was it? <laughs> what make of car, I suppose, you'd, or van would you say it was? I thought it was just like a Ford van. No. I thought it was a transit. It's a Volt. Well, it's been suggested. Volks- oh, a automobile. No. Volkswagen oh. Beetle thingy. Well, it's been suggested that in the cartoon anyway that it was actually a Volkswagen or Corvair van. But in the live action movie, it was actually a Ford Econo line. A van, yeah. So that's clearly what that was. But we'd all have one. In I, fact, I'm sure I've got one on the island somewhere. Where I live, I'm I sure personally... somebody has got their van made up into the Scooby-Doo van. There's Actually, definitely one. About. There's one in Greenock, um, up in Scotland, where I come from. And he must have spent a fortune getting that done. But he's had that. I mean, we were teenagers and he's still got it. 
drives about in it. To be absolutely honest, if I had could have a team van for us, I would have the eighteen van. Oh, I would. I'd have the eighteen van or the General Lee. Not the General Lee, because you had to get through in through the windows. Uh, that would be hilarious. Put my hips you all... out these days doing that. I used to when I was younger, but my hips would go. But the eighteen <laughs> van, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to love the eighteen. Um, you know, yeah. Cats kicking open the back doors and blasting everybody with a proton pack. <laughs> 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 so would we like a mystery machine is the question yeah, yeah i think that's without doubt isn't it yeah I'm okay gone. so scooby is a dog funnily enough yes you're right he is a dog <laughs> so let's have a little chat about whether a dog is good on investigations what do we think about that facet of it all they sense things before we do they apparently do um, yeah, but they can also be a bit hyper, can't they? Yeah. Well, you've got to stop him from being up against everything, but yeah. <laughs> but even most haunted, and I hate to mention it, have a dog? No, well, they used to have a dog on there, didn't they? Oh, yeah, 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 they do have a dog. Actually, a lot of them have got a dog. The um, one about the Blair, uh, not the Blair Witch, the Bell Witch, the guy who was related to the Bell Witch, um, he takes his dog along on it. Do we think it's useful? Has it been proven? I personally, I do think that bringing a, um, either a dog or a cat along, or a local cat, you know, at Lidzo. If you've got an animal there, I think it's quite handy because they do sense things that we can't hear or, hear or see. Ask cats. But do you know what? You're putting ideas in my head now because my kitten is actually eight months old. Sebastian actually runs into rooms and freaks out and then runs out again. I could yeah, the cats do that anyway. Ours do that. I could take him on investigations. That'd be fun. Would you have him <laughs> on a leash? <laughs> could try. Bastard! <laughs> Bastard the cat! <laughs> Are you going to stop I him from running off on an investigation? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be like my two, Lilo and Stitch. Can you imagine bringing them two along to an investigation? I'd be <laughs> spending more time pulling them off lampshades. You know, they'll be like three out, they'll be asleep for most of it, and then they'll just have that mad half hour at like <laughs> stupid o'clock in the morning where you're all thinking, oh my God, there must be activity because the cats are going on? crazy. <laughs> yeah, the cats are going crazy. And and it's not, it's just the cat just having its like mad five minutes. Where but, are you, Scooby Doo? No, it's just the cat. But how freaky would it be if you did. There is lots of, ex, they do have a lot of animals have been talks about in regards to um having abilities and seeing things that we can't see um oh, for a, a long time do you know what i mean i know that when i lived in my old house um my sally dog used to just stare at a doorway that was blocked up which behind that there was a staircase behind there and he she used to sit there and growl at it which was okay when the rest of the family were home but not quite so comfortable when um Nobody was home. <laughs> you were on your own. You'd be like, right, come on, time for your walk. <laughs> Let's get out To be honest, here. if I'd been your dad, I would have trained him to do that just to freak you out. Well, there was lots of weird things that happened in that house. Um, you were a teenager there, weren't you? So definitely. I was a teenager yeah. there, yeah. My psychic abilities were kicking off and made poltergeist activity. <laughs> <laughs> According to my parents, anyway. Uh, we used to have, like, bangings up the stairs. We used to go, before the house <laughs> that we lived in there... Um, it was actually a bungalow, so there was no obvious reason why yeah, they were banging up stairs. Like up the stairs, it sounded like someone was like walking up the stairs, but like really heavily banging up the stairs, like up the steps. But it would get sort of like halfway and then stop. Okay. So we used to joke that it's because it's it's trying the stairs out, but in his day and age, or its day and age, because it was a bungalow, he could only go so far because he's got a ceiling there. Well, funny enough, right at the moment, I've got one of the cats upstairs freaking out. I'm running up and down the landing in our bedroom. She's going absolutely loopy. That's Lilo. Um, got another fact for you. Go on, then. When Shaggy was in a Burger King commercial, Casey Kasem quit the show because he's a staunch vegetarian. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness me. Really? And, yep. And Shaggy do... Uh, uh, sh sorry, Shaggy do and Scooby-Doo are the only two characters to appear in every show. Oh, my word. 
Where are you I finding all looked, this information uh, from? I'm, I looked into this quite extensively and I didn't find out this information. Because if you guys remember, I'm very good at research. I know you are, darling. So, when you, when yes. you do it. <laughs> oh, yes! Meow! <laughs> okay, so ultimately, I think it would be an interesting experiment to take an animal onto an investigation. I think that would be an interesting experiment to do into a, you know, a haunted location. Just to see if there was any reaction. Um, probably if you, if you took um, Chewy the pug along, probably the only reaction would, you would get from him would be from maybe strange smells every now and again <laughs> and probably peeing in the middle of something when he got scared. <coughs> oh, my God, that's no good. So what kind of dog was Scooby-Doo? He was a great Dane, wasn't he? Great Dane. He was a great Dane. Well done. A talking great Dane. I know that the SPR have been looking into um, animals and abilities and seeing if that is relevant in the psychic world, in the paranormal world recently. Actually, why not? Well, when you think that uh, dogs see in black and white, but they see they've got good night vision as well, and then cats have got excellent night vision and can see different spectrums to us. So, you know. Yeah. I know I've read a blog recently um, on somebody who went to the, some talks at the SPR. That was Ashley Nib. He wrote a blog on that recently. That was quite interesting. So, Mr. Nib wrote something with his pen. <laughs> I don't think he uses a pen. I think that's just me who scrawls things in bits of papery there and everywhere. No, and one more for you. <laughs> Go on then. There were rumours started up about Velma being a lesbian and they weren't true. And writers got so sick and tired of people trying to get Velma and... Um, what's the other girl? I can't remember her name. Daphne. 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 Velma and Daphne together that they tried to match Velma up with Shaggy to put an end to the rumours. Really? Yeah, the rumours <laughs> only came out because a... Um, Blue movie was made of Scooby Doo, and it had Velma. <laughs> it had Velma and the other girl together in one scene. Mm. <laughs> oh my God, you did do your research. <laughs> you I have to run... admit, I've seen, I have seen that clip. Oh my God, Marks! And it destroyed Marks, my isn't? childhood. It destroyed my childhood. I bet it did. My word! And I had to lie down for half an hour. <laughs> to lie down for half an hour. So, guys, you know, we had Fred, who we've said was the brawn of the group. Didn't seem to have an awful lot upstairs. No. But he used no. to, didn't he, wasn't he the one that used to devise all the traps for said ghost? He did, but he used to always wander off with Daphne. And the whole reason that that used to happen was because the people at May Scooby-Doo thought that um, Daphne and Fred were actually quite boring. So they used to take the onus off those two. Focus mainly on Scooby, Thelma and Shaggy. Well, they always always got split up, didn't they? Well, you've got him. I mean, if you've got to have it, yeah, need half decent monsters. Go to split you up so he can scare you. Well, this is very true. You should know that. I mean, come on. I know. <laughs> and, and it has, again, on investigations, that has been a known phenomena, hasn't it? Where um, it seems, when activity is happening, that it will happen... And seem to draw people away in different directions. Yeah. It does. It like yeah. any sort of entity or energy likes splitting you up because it likes to be able to scare the bejesus out of one of you. Or is it because in a group you're stronger? So if it splits, yeah. divide and conquer, as it were, yeah. you know, it divides the weakest or the most open off maybe that's mm -hmm. the case that that we're on the assumption that we are now talking on the assumption that there are actually spirits i don't know i've seen a few gins and vodkas in me time well i've seen a few of those quite recently as well <laughs> <laughs> no really twice <laughs> anyway that's a different did, topic completely did you know scooby-doo was nominated for two major awards what awards? 
They were nominated for a Daytime Emmy in 1990 and outstanding performance in an animated programme in 2003. Was that to do with the movie, the 2003? Mindy Cohn as Velma. Because she did such a good job as Velma, yeah. Oh. And I must admit, um, I can't remember the guy's name, but the one who did Shaggy, he played him brilliantly in the films. He did, but I didn't like the films. Um, no, I didn't, because Sarah Michelle Gellar, it, it, uh, no, just no. Very badly, wrongly cast, and so was Freddie, Freddie Prince she Jr. should have stuck to Buffy. Anyway, let's take a quick break. I'm remembering my breaks at the moment. So let's take a quick break, and then we'll be... Hello, Harry Price here. Good evening. If there's nothing myself and everybody else enjoy here on the other side more is the sit back and relax and listen to Parasearch Radio with its paranormal news, views and reviews from across the UK and beyond. Make sure to find out more about them on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web, whatever they are, to keep up to date with all their broadcasts throughout the week. And I hope you enjoy them as much as we do over here. Hello? Is anybody there? Welcome back to the Dark Mirror Show. Tonight we are talking all things Scooby Dooby Doo, and um, we're looking at how it actually influences and what lessons we can learn from the cartoon we all said, or we all watched, sorry, um, when we were children. So we've got Mark and Kaz with us, and you missed. Oh, I literally turned the advert on and then Mark did an amazing Scooby-Doo impression. So come on, Mark. Oh, God. All right. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> ooby, ooby, <ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> and we were talking, we were starting to look at the characters and we, we were talking about Fred um, and how they always seem to get separated and how it has seemed to be known in the paranormal field that this seems to happen, particularly when you are allegedly coming against a negative energy. I mean... I'll tell you I what else it taught people. Pardon? I know what else it taught people. Go on then. That you would have gotten away with it if it hadn't been for those meddling kids. <laughs> 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 and we'll come on to that in a moment. So let's have a look at Daphne. What was her role in it, apart from just standing around looking pretty? Mm, not a lot. <laughs> she screamed a lot and she satisfied Fred. <laughs> did she actually Never, have, when they did were she driving leave, in the did she have a seat. role or did she, or was she oh. just like the the eye candy of the group eye candy she was just she was eye, eye candy, candy. And she had a ham roll and you never saw her hands when she was in the front of the uh, mystery machine with fred mm. god you always have to turn it to something a little bit risque don't you you never see her hands it's a, a, child. It's a child's man. cartoon for goodness sakes they had, I'll tell you another thing there, Kerry. Mm-hmm. They had an episode that involved aliens! Oh, they had lots of episodes that involved aliens. <laughs> Just had to get it in there. You had to get it in. Well, I, I'm expecting it now. I think I've just come yeah. to the conclusion that we're just expecting it with the old alien thing. Yeah, um, exactly. So, so that was Daphne. We're just putting her down to a bit of eye candy. Um, Velma. Velma was just the brain box, wasn't she? Exactly. She was definitely the brain. She always had her head in a book. She was always reading something. Or... Always yeah, reading. Well, always putting the clues together. She was like the little Sherlock yeah. Holmes of the group, wasn't she? Yeah. Didn't she always do the reveal? Uh, sometimes Fred did. I remember Fred doing a few reveals. Yeah. Yeah, mm. definitely. There you mm. go. So... Sca- uh, Scarvy, um, Shaggy and Scooby. <laughs> that was like a mix of the two names. Um, Shaggy and Scooby were purely comedy factor, weren't they? They were, but I mean, yeah. you know, it, it was made in the sixties, so you know, we're we're talking. Um, yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> Shaggy was kind of like the dopey hippie, wasn't he? <laughs> he was the dopey stone hippie. What do you yeah, think Scooby he was snacks the were? Stone hippie, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, that's what Scooby snacks were. They that was yeah. slang. Um, I think it was New York City slang for smoking a bit of a doobie. You know, Scooby Snacks, doobie doobie doo. 
<laughs> they were always was... hungry, weren't they? They were always hungry, those two. You'd be that oh, hungry if you had to go in the same van that they were hotboxing in. It's these blinking Scooby snacks. I mean, what were they? Were they just dog biscuits? Because Shaggy seemed to eat an awful lot of those too. They were dog biscuits, but it, it was code for what they ate when they had the munchies. Go. So anyway, as I was trying to say, did you know that Scooby was originally going to be a sheepdog? A sheepdog? It was originally, yeah, he was originally going to be a sheepdog, but the producers at the time thought he would be so similar, a bit similar to a character called Hot Dog, which was in a comic called Archie um, back in the 60s. So instead of doing a um, sheepdog, they turned him into a Great Dane. Well, it definitely works as a Great Dane. I think if you had Shaggy uh, Scooby Doo the sheepdog, that would just just wouldn't. Nah, nah, because it'd be like Lassie. Mm. Yeah, it would be like Lassie, wouldn't it? It would be. Yeah. Work. No, yeah, I don't just... think it would have worked as anything. It might have worked as a spaniel. <laughs> 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 yeah. You know. And, and Scooby Doo was the first cartoon to use canned laughter. Oh, yeah, they did that, didn't they? And it was the first first one ever to use canned laughter. And it was also the longest-running Saturday morning show in, the, in the history of United States TV. Wow. Wow. So... so if you're going to say wow, you've got to go, like, wow! Like, wow! <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad at impressions. I'm so bad. I try them, but oh, I'm my. really bad at them. <laughs> so, guys... um. Let's look at how they used to investigate then. They used to sort of like rock up at a place, didn't they? And um, find out that there was a mystery or a haunting or something was going on. And generally everybody else had left the, the vicinity apart from one or two people. It was normally old man muggins or the butler. Yeah, yeah, goddamn kids. You know? <laughs> and it was usually because somebody was trying to embezzle something or or search for treasure and didn't want anybody else to have the booty. You know, it was always something along those Would lines. Would it? You said booty and my dog rolled over and is showing me her booty and it's like, you're really patched, <laughs> really. <laughs> What's a bit of Scooby-Doo? That's what it is. And they would be tried to be scared away by a, a monster of some form. Uh, every single... I, mean, I always remember the mummy one, like I say, because he used to go, coin, coin, because it was some <laughs> historical treasure thing. And yes. I always remember that the um, the witches on broomsticks just reminded me in later years of mother-in-laws. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what, out of all of the episodes of Scooby-Doo, what's one of the ones, I mean, you've just told us what a couple of yours might, but what are one, some of the episodes that have really stuck in your mind? Kerry? I mean, Kaz? Many. There's that many. That is not an answer! But honestly, there's that many. I can't. I can't say any particular one. Do you remember the one where they um, uh, were in Jack Dracula's castle and then they all Dracula decided, hey, I know, let's go and do a monster drag strip. Do you remember? <laughs> I don't remember nope. that one. <laughs> they, they all got in their cars and they had some mad race. Um, was... and was... oh, so, sorry. What? Sorry, there was one that I remember where it was like a deep sea diver outfit. That's right, yes. And it yes. sort of glowed as it came out of the water. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you um, get too close to a nuclear submarine, really. <laughs> <laughs> that was one that, st- that st- stuck in my head for some ob- obscure reason. I really don't really know why that particular... It was sunken is... treasure, wasn't it? That was Blackbeard's was... treasure, that's it. I know, but out of all of the scooby Doos, you would think there would be something else, you know... That would have stuck in my head. Maybe, I think actually it was in the credits. You know, like the opening credits. I think that monster was in the credits. That could be why that particular episode has stuck in my head. Yeah. You know, you said, what did they all do? I've got a thing here and it tells you the job descriptions of each member. Go on then. You tell us that. Right. Okay. You have got Fred, full name Fred Jones, job, the leader. Then you've got (laughs) Daphne and Blake. That's all right. Daphne Ann Blake is her name, and her job is the heart. 
Aww. Then you've got Velma, who is Velma Dinkley. Dinkley. <laughs> the dog is great. <laughs> then you've got Shaggy Rogers and Scooby Doo. And do you know what their jobs are? Go on. The appetite. The appetite. So, so you've the got appetite. the leader, the heart, the brains, and the appetite. Yeah. So, so that well, on that theory, then they've incorporated the whole of the human bits of the body in one team. And the mystery machine is the wheels. Well, obviously. I mean, come on. <laughs> and Shaggy's Duh. real name. Shaggy's real name is actually Norville Rogers the Third, but he hated being called Norville, so he was called Shaggy because of his beard. Are you reading the geeks for the geeks? Encyclopedia of Scooby Doo or something? No, oh, I can just do my research. That's all. <laughs> I think it's all of the encyclopedia. So, okay, so we've all been on investigations where we've thought that we've had paranormal activity. Can we think of any examples where what seemed to be paranormal turned out to be completely logical and, you know, normal? Do you want to go first, Kaz? Yeah. Um, in a certain house in Pontefract, we spent a good hour trying to find out where tapping came from. Mm. And literally, it ended up with two guys who were with us outside, leaning on the windowsills, putting the weight on them to see if that's where the noise was coming from because it seemed to come from the window mm. frame. And it turned out that there was someone upstairs in one of the rooms... And every time they moved on the bed, <laughs> <laughs> it made this tapping noise. So it was completely ah. normal. Mark? Um, one I remember the most was, do you remember that dance studio? Yeah. Um, and everybody said that they kept feeling weird and creepy and nauseous and, and seeing things out the corner of their eyes in that particular hallway that went down to the toilet. Yeah. Yeah, remember I went down there with my K2 me- uh, meter and measured the, um, uh, uh, I can't remember the flipping name of it, the Altristine, yeah. EMF. EMF. Yeah, it was, all, yes, EMF, and it was all coming through from the meter cupboard. It was just the other side of that wall, because they had like 10 electric meters, didn't they? It in was that incredibly one room. high, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was that that was causing them to see things. Yeah, oh. it was incredibly high. Well, I have found a few cases. Oh, Shaggy, he was incredibly high as well. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a few cases now. These, this is like a little bit um, different, um, where it turned out to be more of a normal explanation. So these guys were on an investigation, and weird things always happened in this building allegedly. And then while they were doing an EVP session, um, the blinds were going crazy. It, it seemed to be in response two questions that were asked they got all excited about this thinking the ghost is moving the blinds and um then when you know they checked the windows they were all shut and couldn't find a logical initial logical explanation um for this phenomena because these are you know these are like venetian blinds they're quite heavy you know the metal ones Mm -hmm. that go down yeah so they got really really excited about this um very unusual way of communicating but you know hey ho and anyway, so they started asking more questions and it would. Anyway, they then realised that every time the blinds moved, it was quite a windy night. And it wasn't that the windows were open, but there was like just a crack in the window frame that was yeah. where the wind went past. That's what was actually causing it to. So, yeah, so when they were like asking questions, they were actually asking questions to the wind, basically. <laughs> and they got really I excited got the about it. Too. <laughs> and they probably would have got away with that too now there's another um, example I found where it turned out to be an incredibly logical explanation um, rather than a paranormal I mean there are hundreds I mean you, the, the funny stories of people investigating and then finding out it's a logical explanation it's just another one a guy had moved into an apartment and he kept getting this really strong smell of decay and death so he called in a paranormal team and uh, so they investigated where this smell was coming from. And uh, basically, the <laughs> the guy who was renting in a room lived like a pig, basically. 
and oh. had loads and loads of like takeaway debris around his house. But it, that wasn't the smell. The guy was going, no, that's not the smell. That's just like a general smell that comes out of the room. This this is like an absolute stinky stench. You know, like it is like the smell yeah. of death. So anyway, they sort of like investigated this room and um, they actually found a piece of um, Mont- Montegre cheese, Montejac, Montejac, that's the word, Montejac cheese, cheese down the side of the sofa that was in there. And it was that <laughs> that was creating the smell of death. How disgusting. <laughs> yeah. There's something it, dead in here. Like, so well, every time, no, no, he, every no, time no, that, no. that they sat on the sofa, obviously it moved to release the stench, which made this, I mean, they already had like a normal stench, but then every time they sat on the sofa, this wafted out and no wonder it had this, you know, stinky, so, extra stinky stench, I suppose you would call it. Coming out. So basically, Ghostbusters were called in to sort out foul old Ron's to stench. Yeah, basically. (sighs) Do you want to know some of the jobs that Scooby-Doo and co. have had over the years in their cartoons? Go on then. Go on then. Carnival owner. Construction worker. Freelance journalists. Gym teachers. That's just bizarre. Go... uh, Co-race car drivers, they worked at airport customs, they were detectives, and when they were young, (laughs) you're going to love this, when they were young, all of them um, used to work out of a clubhouse and they called themselves junior detectives for hire. Guess what the name of their hometown was where they used to go solve these mysteries? Amateurville. Coolsville. Who? (laughs) Coolsville. Coolsville. Like cool, Coolsville. Well, like Coolsville, yeah. Oh, no, that's just totally... Yep. Oh, that's so bad. That's cheesy. <laughs> cheesy. Yeah, that's it. Cheesy. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I think, what so, it taught, I think what it taught us was um, if we can look back now and use Scooby-Doo as a teaching tool... <laughs> <laughs> is to, well, I know the way my mind works is to actually look for the logical explanation and not always automatically jump to the assumption of ghosts. Plus, actually, nowadays it wouldn't work anyway because in the old days the story of a ghost is enough to stop people from going there, whereas nowadays it actually creates everyone wanting to go there. You know, like yeah. loads, <laughs> loads of people wanting to go there. Like, you know, if a new haunting came up. Um, you'd find people queuing out the door to go and, and try and find said ghosty, wouldn't you? Yeah. You'd go turn up and say, oh, you're back, we were here first. <laughs> you know, it would be hysterical. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. that's how you get a mystery up, isn't it? You hear a ghost story and we all go, ooh. Ooh, let's see if we <laughs> can get in there and see if we can find out what it is. So are, Funny we, enough, are we going yes. out into the field and looking for the logical um, explanations or are we going out and hoping we find a real-life ghost monster? I, I personally, I like to go out and get the munchies. <laughs> that makes you sound really bad. That makes you sound really, really bad. <laughs> no, I, I hope we do meet, not necessarily a monster because I... I think there's lots of explanations for different types of things like that. But I I certainly think that one day we are, (laughs) one of us is going to be able to actually turn around and say, we've done it. And we've actually communicated and it's communicated back. And there will be irrefutable proof that nobody can say it's been faked. Mm, That's controversial, isn't it? Because some people would say they've already done that. Yeah, I know. But I mean, when you... The only way you're ever going to be able to convince people is if you've got, like, I don't know, world famous <laughs> people there, it's all filmed, and you actually see an entity appear and go, boo, 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 and then go again. That's the only time it's going to really happen. Kaz? <laughs> uh, when I go, yeah, I go because I want to communicate with spirit. But I'm actually really interested in the stories. I'm trying to find out the story behind it and why spirits are in certain places, um, which is probably why 
I don't research before I go to locations. I wait until after I've been. Yeah. I was talking about this on Sunday with Penny and we were looking at the relevance of knowing history before you go or yeah. whether or not you shouldn't know your history. Um, I think it's a bad thing. Well, I found it a hindrance on this investigation, yeah. knowing so much about the location. So when I was working, I was just thinking, when I was getting information, I was like, well, I read that. I know that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it made yeah. me really doubt what I was getting. It was a bad night anyway for me, but um, I just wasn't comfortable with what I was getting because I knew too much about like the eras that, you know, the, the various things that this place had been and people that had been there. And it just made me really doubt things. And the whole, but, and to be fair, the whole location was really quiet anyway. So sorry, carry on, Mark. Um, one thing I was going to say about that is, is as you know, in one of our um, teams, I used to do the research, but as you also know, I never used to say a word about it until afterwards. Mm. Um, and as from my point of view from that, it's actually really cool when I see you guys getting hitting the nail on the head or getting close to it. Because then afterwards, you know, when we used to we'd go to like a boking or something at yeah, three o'clock debrief. Morning, and debrief, that's when yeah. I'd be like, oh, my God, guys, you know. And for me, I find it really exciting. See that I liked that as well. <laughs> I, I liked going in cold and not knowing anything about the location. Yeah. And yeah, I prefer that. Yeah, I, per I personally have, because I'm working now in a different way, I actually did prefer that way of working. And I, we, that was said on the, um, on the show that we actually liked having a dedicated researcher who knew. So while we were working and doing what we did, you know what I mean, they knew. I quite happily go back to doing that again, you know. and Because uh, Kaz, Kaz and I are putting things together for next year, yeah. aren't we? Um, um, hopefully you'll be involved in some of them as well, Kerry, because you yeah. are part of the team. I know. Um, I I would like to do that again, research and research and research on some of these places. <laughs> and just not say anything until we've done an investigation. Yeah. That uh, was, I mean, the funny situation I've actually ever been in at a location, I won't say what location, um, but when we got there, the person who owned the location was there and insisted in taking us round and shown us round the location. Uh, and I spent the best part of an hour trying to avoid this poor man and dodging him. <laughs> yeah, because they want to tell you the history of it, don't they? And the rest are following him, and he's kind of looking, and he must have said to one of the team, team um, is there something wrong? And they said, no, she doesn't like to know anything. <laughs> they had to explain <laughs> that I didn't want to know, so I wasn't being rude, but he thought I was being rude for quite a while. Aww. Another fact for you. Got another Go fact then. for you. Scooby Doo um, has uh, holds the record for having the most episodes of a, co um, a cartoon comedy series ever. Wow, ever. In, yeah, ever. In two thousand and four, uh, the it hit its three hundred and fiftieth episode with Scooby Doo Halloween. Ah, wow, that's amazing. You sounded so sarcastic then. <laughs> I wasn't trying oh, to be sarcastic. Amazing. Wow, that sounds amazing. Oh my god. No, that it does. That's amazing. That sounded a bit more um credible then, didn't I? Um now the other thing Scooby Doo did was it introduced us to cryptozoology. It did introduce us to cryptozoology. Yeah. Now we have a really what... we've done a couple of shows um on the Dark Mirror about cryptozoology. Um and it, I'll be honest with you, it's a bit like I don't really get into the cryptozoology side of things, but it definitely introduced <clears throat> us into that side of things, didn't it? Definitely. Well, you, as you know, I'm, I like all <coughs> aspects paranormal, but I am especially interested in cryptozoology. And so is a Mr. J. Lynch. He is. So, he uh, likes to I, go out and do yeah. tracking. He's he's a very good sure. tracker, actually, is Jay. Uh, yeah, I thought he said that to me once, and then I realised it was a spelling mistake. Um, and we've also, we've also one day we're going to have to do another dark night show and get Mr. J Lynch back on there for so we can do a um, cryptozoology one again. I yeah. think. Do you? Yes, I agree. Yeah. 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 But I think that's got to be done. So, and hopefully next year, um, all being well, because I start a new job tomorrow. 
Um, I'm going to save up and I'm going to try and get over to the US for a couple of weeks and maybe meet up with Mr. Lynch and do a couple of investigations, if I can. I think we're all trying to plan to do that for next year. Yeah, um, oh, that would yeah, be awesome. I think, I think that's on the on the board for all of us to try and do. I need to seriously manifest some money for that because I really want to do that too. Now, oh God, yeah. in regards to cryptozoology, details for a location in the USA as well. I know, and I know which location it is, and I'm like, oh my god, yeah, I, I want to go. Oh, which um, one? Which one? Which one? Waverly Hills. <coughs> yes. Like, wow! Yes. <laughs> and I have actually gotten as far as seeing how to book it. Wow. Yeah. So, in regards to the cryptozoology, that's a whole different ball game in regards to investigating, isn't it? Because you have to be really good at tracking, which is something yeah. I'm really bad at. <laughs> Definitely. You've got to know the country that you're in. You've got to know the, what, the, what animals are in that locale that you're at. And you've got to know what their tracks are and, you know, their, what their scat is as well. And, uh, you know, when you find a different scat or poo and different oh. footprints, you've got, that's when you go, oh. Yeah, scat is just um, hunter term for poop. Oh, right. All right. Or Richard the Turd, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but we do do external um, investigations, don't we? When we go out, um, sometimes, you know, when we're looking for um, ghosts, we'll look for, I mean, we've done a few outdoor lo locations, um, and I find them quite good Epping on Forest. a spiritual front. Yeah, Epping Forest, Hockley Woods, yeah. we've done. We've done, um, oh, what was the other one called? Oh, I can't remember. I think Forest, Hockley Woods. Did one in Kent. Anyway, uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, when we do those, it's you kind of are working on a lot more spiritual front. You can't really set up your CCTV. You can't really... Yeah, you can take your K2s and your EMF millimetres and your um, those kind of things, but you can't really take anything else, can you? Or can you? I think, quite frankly, if you're, especially if you're doing cryptozoology, take a dog along. You know what we were talking about earlier? How they yeah. can sense things. Take a dog along. Mm. Oh, God, you would never get my dog out. He doesn't even like the wind, let alone dark. I can hear him. I, I can know, hear him. He's in the background. He's having a little wander around at the moment. He's all getting he's all worried. He's getting all worried. I don't know why. But, um, yeah, that that's an idea. But then wouldn't that scare away any other animal? Mm. Not necessarily. No. Not really. I mean, it'd be like me taking Patch along to one of our investigations. Patch loves going along, but she, she you know yourself, they, they sense things, and she's actually very good at that, and she stops and goes really, really quiet and listens. And she doesn't bark or growl or anything. She just stops and listens. And looks in the direction that she can hear it. Because I've had her across the woods from us um, in the middle of the night taking her for a walk. She's really good at, you know, hearing other things. <laughs> well, I know I'm not very good in that environment at all because I don't see anything like squirrels and stuff. And I think my dog would just be chasing squirrels, barking an awful <laughs> lot. So if there was a Bigfoot out there, it would be like, oh, keep away from their area. They're far too noisy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think my dog is not going to be good on any investigation, indoor, outdoor, or any other way. I'd be cowering in a corner or barking at everybody who moved. <laughs> so you definitely would have to choose your right, the right pet. Mind you, having said that, Scooby-Doo wasn't exactly very good in the, the environment, was he? I reckon the meerkats from the Miracorvo advert, I reckon you should have them along. <laughs> Why? That'd be brilliant. Just Scooby Doo with the meerkats. Scooby Doo with the meerkats. That'd just be like two Scrappy Doos, surely. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Scrappy Doos an annoying little poo. But the two meerkats, everybody loves the meerkats. They do. Yeah, they, they do, but how good would they be in an investigation? They wouldn't. Well, for a start, they can walk on their hind legs and hold magnifying glasses and books. Uh, that's true, that's true. <laughs> and you've got Sergei. Sergei can use computers and stuff, so can you to be Bob? So he could, use, he could be the um, tech guy. He could be the tech guy, definitely. Well, you want anyway, to know... Go sorry, on, one, go. Last, want... one last fact, go on. You want to know what all the characters' original names were going to be? 
Go on then. Go on then. <laughs> Jeff, Mike, Kelly, Linda, and WW, who was Linda's brother, and their dog, who was too much. Oh. And that's oh, when God. they were solving um, mysteries in between gigs in the rock band called Meddling Kids. Meddling Kids. That's where, they, that's where it came from. Their rock band was going to be called Meddling Kids. Right, I see. Well, on that note, we have actually come to the end of the show. So thank you so much for bearing with me on the Scooby-Doo factor. I thought it was quite <laughs> relevant um, and quite a good little fun topic for a change. Now, next week, guys, now I've been watching a series on Netflix. It's a Netflix special called Stranger Things. I love it. Oh, I've heard about that, yeah. I love it. I can't tell you how much I do love it. Apparently, it is actually based on a real-life conspiracy theory. Um, Ooh, and we're yeah. going to have a look at Camp Hero next week. Um, and ah, talk right. about yes. Camp Hero. Now, this is right up my lovely Mark Manley's alley, I suppose you'd <laughs> want to call it. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't done a conspiracy theory for a while and being as Stranger Things is hitting the media attention and is incredibly popular, we thought we'd have a look into this camp hero for you and see whether or not it's a relevant conspiracy, I suppose is where I'm going with that. Um, don't forget, on Sunday night, I have the lovely Crystal in the studio with me on the Spirit Dimension show, and we are talking about animal psychics. Um, and other things. How to Live with the Psychic was another book that she's written. So I'm looking forward to that show. Um, and on that note, we'll see you all next week. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, good night, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> good night, Kaz. Good night. And it's <laughs> And it's farewell from me. Thank you for Thanks listening. Easy. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.